Nigga, give me everything, nigga. Get out. Get out. Get in the car. Get in the car, nigga. Get in the car, nigga. Get in the car, nigga. Chill, chill. Chill, chill. Where your man at? Where your man at? Give me your money. Where your money at? Give me your money. Give me your money. Give me the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in the car. I'm gonna shoot you. No, you just give me the car. Get in the car. Open it. Open the door. Open the door. Get in it. Get in the car. Get in the car. Get in it. That's what I'm doing. Get the fuck in it. Ain't nobody in here. Ain't nobody in here. What are you doing over there? I want to talk to you. About what? About what? Why are you yelling at me? What you mean, sir? Give me the book. Give me the book. I'll try to call you, bro. I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up. So why ain't got your number? Because I asked for your number. Where the fuck is everything, eh? Get in the car with us, man. Bye, nigga. Give me the phone. Get out of here. You don't talk to him. You don't talk to him. You don't talk to him. Alright, alright, give me a call, give me a call. Give me a call. Wait, I have to make sure everything good, man. We're gonna talk to him, that's it, man. Okay, right, you know. Sistema OnStar no está activado. Para activar su servicio, presione el botón azul de OnStar ahora o llame al 1-888-4-OnStar. Conectando con OnStar. Esta llamada puede ser registrada para control de calidad. Su llamada OnStar ha terminado. Adiós. Conectando con OnStar. Esta llamada puede ser registrada para control de calidad. ¿Aló? ¿Aló? Buen día. Necesito que llame a la policía. Acaban de secuestrar a mi hermano. Por favor. Ok, señor, estaré contactando al 911. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Rivera Jorge. Te pongo una breve espera, que estoy para ti. Ok. Ok. Gracias por esperar. Su asesor regresará a la línea en breve.
Gracias por su paciencia. Tenga la seguridad que nuestro equipo trabaja rápidamente para ayudarle. Gracias por esperar. Su asesor regresará a la línea en breve. Gracias por su paciencia. Tengo la seguridad que nuestro equipo trabaja rápidamente. Señor, tengo el operador de nuevo de la línea con nosotros. Gracias. Gracias. ¿Puedo en español? Sí. Sí. Right. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah, they just kidnap it. They we get pulled over, right, by uh -huh. two guys with guns, and they just take it off on the car. Take him? Yes. Where this happened? Yes, right here, around the corner. I try to keep going, but they, they, when I get too close to him to take the play, mm -hmm. uh, the guy come on and, and I try to shoot me, so I, I back it up and, and I came this way. Okay, show me where it happened. Back, turn around. Yeah. The police on the scene? Señor, ¿ya hay policías en la escena? Sí, encontré uno aquí parado. Ok, there's already police. Police, what's the location? Uh, I have 1305 Bedford Avenue in New York, New York. Uh, Bedford Avenue, what street is it on? I mean, what, what's the address? It's 1305 Bedford Avenue. 1305 Bedford Avenue. Correct. That's what Jake and Emerson, check it out. So... People, my voice is a little bit raspy, but please forgive me. Now, I wanted to speed up the story here because I know y'all didn't really want to hear where you went to school to send third. And we're on day two of what's going on with the 6 9 trial testimony drama. And to be honest, you will find out really quickly that this seems more like a movie, more like a compelling series that could probably rival Narcos, The Wire, Breaking Bad. Yes, it's that intriguing. Now, one thing we're going to start and we're going to cover is his testimony surrounding the kidnapping. Now, y'all just seen the video. Seems surreal. But let me read what he actually testified that goes along with the video. Now, he basically said, yo, check it out. I'm editing the Fifi video on Final Cut. By the way, if you don't know, 6 9 edited most of the video. Yo, 6 9 used to be a videographer before all this ever happened. His rap career and everything. So he edited all his videos, right? So he's editing the Fifi video on Final Cut, but he don't know to do one thing. Put like a nameplate or a name template on it. So he tells his driver, yo, get the car ready. I'm going to drive to my homie's crib because he know how to do it. And he says, Andrew Green moved out to Park Slope because he was scared, which is like, I don't know why you added that, but still, that's what it is. It was an objection, sustained. Then, we stop at the intersection of Atlantic Avenue and Bedford by the shelter. We get hit from behind. Boom! George, or Jorge, tells me, don't get out the car. I let them go on their way, meaning, and I guess he thinks, yo, somebody just like hit the car. Let them go. Who cares about insurance? This is late night. We don't really have protection like that. And it's kind of like a war zone for 6 9 at this point. He says, we're thinking that somebody's drunk. Jorge gets out the car, and he takes longer than usual. He says, I see a guy running up with a gun. I could have tried to lock the door, but it was too late. The person who ran up was Harv's friend. Now, the prosecutor or the defense attorneys for the, the guys accused says, objection. Clearly, they're saying, how you know it was his friend, right? So that's why they're objected. Then the judge says, the jury will disregard the description of someone as Harv's friend. 6 9 continues. He's like, shut the F up. Get out the car. Harv was there too, wearing a red hoodie. There was a scuffle. My driver was, wasn't was making the situation any better than another objection. Keep in mind you're going to see mad objections because the defense prosecutor knows this is really the meat and potatoes of the case. This is the kidnapping. And part of the reason why they're locked up is the kidnapping. The biggest reason, to be honest. 
Now, the judge says sustained. No opinions about the driver, just what happened. 6 9 says, I was telling them, bro, I put money in your pocket. I did right by you. I was just tired of being extorted. Harv goes in the car and takes my book bag with my laptop. They tell me to get in the car that bumped me. Harv gets in the driver's seat. We drive like a minute, then Harv stops and gets out, running with the gun back to Jorge, who's following us. Jorge puts it in reverse. Now the video from the Tahoe owned by Jorge with subtitles in English. So that's where you're seeing the video from. In New York, a lot of like people who do car service, they have like a little camera right by there, um, a rear view uh, mirror, which is really for insurance purposes, right? So if you ever get in a car accident, it could show that you're not trying to fraud the company by asking for money. A lot of people and a lot of accidents happen in New York City, but also a lot of people do scams where they'll intentionally like do some stuff to make it seem like someone else crashed into their car and get a lot of stuff fixed on their car, when in reality it's all a fraud. So people who are trying to be legit, they have these cameras that they can send to the insurance company. Now this camera is being used in court for this criminal case. Now, let's continue. Um, there's audio of the jacking. Get the F in, chill. Yo, I put money in your pocket, bro. Blah, 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 blah. And that's where it continues, okay? Now, here's a slick thing that people don't really kind of get. 6 9 is Spanish. The driver is Spanish. Jorge, clearly, right? 6 9 is Spanish. The driver is Spanish. They both speak Spanish. The guys who are trying to, like, kidnap him, they're black. They probably don't speak Spanish as well. You hear the driver try to call OnStar to tell OnStar to call the cops, but do it in Spanish. Then you hear OnStar message basically says, yo, esta llamada puede ser registrada. Then you hear the recording continues, tienes que llamar la policía, me llamo George. So basically, he's telling OnStar in Spanish, call the cops. He probably don't want to say it in English because they got a weapon on him, right? Then they said, that's when the guy stopped and said, stop it there. What was Harv wearing that evening? Then they said, that's 6 9 says, a red hoodie. And the judge says, please focus on what actually happened. 6 9 says, I was pleading with Harv. I mentioned my daughter. The judge cuts in. It's like, your daughter wasn't there that night to say what happened. And um, the, the judge says, Mr. Longyear, which is the prosecutor, you may have to lead. This is, and then I guess 6 9 says, okay, I see a phone flashing like it was recorded. Then 6 9 says, Harv made me say three times, I am not Billy. By the way, that is significant because looks like they were trying to record 6 9 saying he's no longer a gang member. They pick me up from the floor, and the judge cuts in. He says, counsel, let me see you at the, the basically um, um, the counter, right? So it's like, let's get a sidebar, which is away from anything that's going to be mentioned on the record. So the judge then tells 6 9 bro, only answer the questions that was asked, okay? Which is hilarious because people were like, yo, damn. 6 9 is volunteering so much information that the judge had to tell him, like, bro, please stay on topic. You wilding right now. You telling too much, okay? Anyway, they say stay on topic, and he says, okay, Harv says we can do this dude right here. No one would ever know. This is a stolen vehicle, by the way. Harv says, what are you exchanging for your life? And 6 9 says, stay with me to the morning. Now, I got to be honest with you. In trying to find reasons why he's probably cooperating, this is big to me. Imagine somebody says, what are you willing to exchange for your life? So they will pretty much tell you, we're down to kill you, but you may have a chance to walk out of this alive. And it then tells you really people's intention. You Now you have to go about looking at everything different because your life hangs in the balance. So if you get out of this situation... Are you going to be sympathetic and not want to testify on them dudes? What? Come on, man. Bad people going to be testifying, right? Again, this goes to speak to his mindset, right? 6 9 then says, yo, listen, I'll give you 100000 in the morning when the bank opens. And Harv says, nah. I mean, smart choice by him. I ain't waiting till the morning when you could get the cops and all that, and we're not going to no bank, right? So what you got right now? He said they drove to Kingston, which is where Six Nine moved to after Locust, and he and he says we came to an agreement. If I came, if I gave him my jewelry, they would let me go. He asked the mother of his daughter to bring the jewelry down. By the way, earlier in the thread, apparently the jewelry was put in like in a baby Pampers like box, and it was delivered to the kidnapper. Six Nine then says they grabbed the jewelry. I was expecting to be let out of the car, but Harv just kept driving. They let me out behind Smurf Village. Harv said, get out the car. I said, no, if I get out, you won't shoot me in the back. Harv says, man, get the F out the car, man. 
And then 6 9 says, yo, so I ran. I took the first stuff I could. I jumped in the backseat of a car. The guy says, man, get out of my car, bro. I said, bro, you need to relax, bro. Just drive, please. He made all the turns I made. A right, on another right, right to Harv's car. So basically, the dude drove 6 9 back to the guy who 6 9 was running from. And 6 9 continues. After Harv drove away, I told a guy to drive me at the precinct by Quincy. I asked for medical assistance. I went to Kings County Hospital. Shadi got me discharged. He took me somewhere in Long Island at a hospital. Uh, we did a CAT scan. Uh, uh, we got concussion medication. And then he said later at 31 Kingston, I told Mel Murdo what happened. Shadi brought a big assault rice rifle. He told me he was going to spin the block looking to harm Harv. And then they passed the gun to the jurors, that the gun, the gun that was whatever big gun, like they passed it to the jurors like, yo, touch this. See what's up with it, right? Then you basically hear the judge says, hey, we're breaking for the day. Let's be honest. The prosecutors have not done really asking six, nine questions yet going into the third day. And the defense hasn't got a chance to cross-examine the six, nine at all. So he might be on the stand for the rest of the week, but certainly tomorrow he will be on the stand for the majority of the day. It's getting really interesting, but this is only one part of what he's confessed to in court and testified to. I have another video which is dropping like in an hour or so that will have the full details about another situation that you've seen in the blogs and everywhere. But now official footage is out. If you wonder where the official footage is from, once the government presents it into evidence, it is now in public court. It is now data or evidence or videos that could be seen and accessed by the media or whoever who wants it, and it could be put out. So that's how all the videos are coming out now. However, it's keep getting more and more serious. There's more twists, turns, and all type of stuff. This is crazy. Let's just really evaluate what we're hearing so far. You would never ever believe this if this wasn't coming out in federal court this sounds like a lie but it's actually true you're seeing the video the surveillance tapes you're seeing testimonies all the guys are in court it's so crazy and so surreal that it's within god's grace that no one died i have another video coming out detailing really the barclay situation you guys get in comment box make sure you guys like also definitely subscribe please hit the subscription button follow me on instagram because i'm also paralleling videos there too some more academics. I'm out.